Hello guys, I'm here to do a short presentation for you. My name is Daniel Davidson. I'm a senior mathematics undergraduate in my last semester here at SIU and I'm here to talk to you about <clears throat> a course I took last summer over the coronavirus. So in this course we use something called stochastic analysis, which is what you're seeing on the screen right now, which is a way of modeling processes that have noise in them. So we studied several stochastic models of the coronavirus um, and we implemented them, or at least I implemented them, in a Python program which produced graphical output. And I'm not going to bore you with the details of <laughs> all these equations, they're actually pretty exciting, but I would like to show you some of the images uh, that I got out of them. So this is the first model, Model A, and this first image that you're seeing here is pretty standard logistic growth where we have a very simple model where people get sick they die or slash there's no recovery and it slowly spreads throughout the entire population uh, according to this logistic curve if we vary another parameter within the same model we get this which increases the amount of noise you can see that increasing the amount of noise will increase the roughness in the spread. So noise is actually a very significant factor in controlling the spread of a virus through the population. Up next is Model B. This one is a little bit more complicated. It has people getting sick and then recovering from the virus, but no long-term immunity after they've recovered. They can get sick again. Again, I'm not going to go into the details here, but here are some images from the study that I did. So this first image, you can see that unlike the first model, uh, the amount of virus will spike initially and then decrease to a more or less steady state. That's that flat region in the back that you see where the, where, where the virus will, will level off. And uh, what you're seeing is different values of this parameter lambda that's in the model. And you can see that actually will slow the or sorry speed up the spread as you increase lambda uh, this is what happens if you vary the other one of the other parameters in the model you can see this increases the overall peak of the virus so you can see it quite substantially um, as you actually decrease this parameter mu the, the peak uh, increases quite a bit uh, this is the effect of increasing noise in that model. Increasing noise has still some effect, not quite as much as the first model. And here's the last model. This is the most complicated. This has people getting sick, people recovering, and people uh, having an antibody slash immune response. So it shows so some of the images from that. Okay, so this is by far one of the most interesting images that I got out of this, this course. So you can see that as time progresses, you actually get what we call quasi-periodicity. So despite the presence of noise in the system and, and the fact that, uh, you know, obviously there's an initial spike and it goes back down, eventually you see that there is a second wave, and this isn't we didn't pre-program this, we didn't expect this, this just emerged out of the dynamics of the model uh, that we had. And this is always exciting. <laughs> One of the most exciting things is when your model actually displays some of the qualitative features you're looking for that occur in the real world. Um, here are some other images of varying other parameters. Uh, these aren't quite as fascinating, but you can see there's some pretty cool images here. Okay, that does just about does it. I would like to credit the professor, Dr. Henry Schertz, for all the notes you saw on the screen. Um, all the images were created by me in a Python program that I uh, coded. And in closing, I would just like to say that, you know, modern mathematics is really about a well-rounded skill set. Obviously, you have to have your basis in pure mathematics or some degree of pure mathematics and pure theory. But then you need to be able to have skills in computer science and programming to be able to implement those in software and finally to interpret your results, uh, both analytical and from your computer software. 
and apply them to the real world. So, uh, you know, that would be the next step for me, would be figuring out, okay, is there some sort of conclusion that we could draw from this? And then moving on to the next step. So thank you for listening to this uh, presentation. I hope you found it interesting to see how mathematics relates to something in our uh, real world that has significance. And hope you all have a great day.